What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today. And today you're seeing a bunch of random stuff here. You're seeing eBay, you're seeing random parts, random video cards, an old Mac Pro beside me. And you're probably like, why the heck do you have that thing? That thing should be in the trash, it's so old. Well, you're right, it is old. It's a 2009 Mac Pro. It's considered a four comma one, which is the model that was before the five comma one which was then replaced by the six comma one trash can. But basically I've been reading on some forums that you can upgrade this thing by flashing the firmware to a Mac Pro five comma one because it didn't really change the internals too much. And then you can put newer processors in it, faster RAM and actually install Mac OS high Sierra or Sierra, whichever you want to install, which basically lets you bring this thing into 2017. And that's what I'm going to do. And the main reason why I got this is because I've been shooting with the Canon C200. I'm shooting with it right now but I'm not shooting in RAW. But when I do shoot in RAW, none of the video editing apps can read those RAW files yet until they get updated. And so you have to use Canon's transcoding software and it's crap for PC and that's what I've been using for editing with. It only transcodes to DPX files and they're just super massive and really hard to work with. But if you're using the Mac version of the software, you can actually transcode it to ProRes 444 and that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna use this system to transcode footage. I'm gonna turn this eight core system into a 12 core, 24 thread system. We're gonna put some Xeon processors in it from a server that I got. Uh, they're the X5690s, which are six core, 12 thread, 3.46 gigahertz. So I'm putting two of those in it. And I got some server RAM, so some 1333 megahertz ECC RAM, so that's server RAM. And then I've got a USB 3 card for it because it doesn't come with USB 3. These were topped out at USB 2. I've got an M.2 drive I'm gonna put in it. I'm gonna put this Radeon HD 7970, which works out of the box. Uh, I may upgrade it to something a little bit faster if I decide I want to. I could even actually take the 1080 Ti out of my PC and put it in here. I got a SATA 3 card I can put in it that will allow me to put some faster SSDs in it. And yeah, I just gotta get some cables and that's basically it. This thing is gonna be actually probably really fast. It might even be just as fast as my new editing PC that I built, obviously not the video card. But if we look at all the prices of stuff added up, most of the stuff was used, including the system. I only paid 600 bucks for the system, believe it or not. Including all the parts in the system, I spent under 1500 bucks Canadian. So that's pretty cheap. The M.2 drive was the most expensive part because this system, if you want to do this yourself, NVMe drives don't really work with the older Mac Pros. So you have to use an AHCI drive and Samsung made one of those. It's called a 951 and uh, it's a little bit expensive because it's harder to find, but that does work in here in a slot. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm basically going to do this right from scratch. I got to clean all the dirt out of it. I got to upgrade the firmware on it first before I want to put the new CPUs in it. And uh, you can come along and watch me do it. You may hate this. Uh, I'll put some timestamps if you want to skip the whole build process and then just get to my final thoughts and the benchmarks. So yeah, let's get into it right now. All right, so since I have Yosemite, apparently there's some error issues. So I actually had to download the firmware from Apple's own site. And this is it here. You just mount it. You don't actually install anything from it. So once it's mounted here, yeah, we don't want to click on that. Then we're going to open up the Mac Pro 2009, 2010 firmware tool. And this is the thing we want to use here. So open this up. I'm currently using a wired mouse and keyboard just in case Bluetooth has issues. Uh, we go to upgrade the firmware, creates a RAM disk. And this is what's going to boot the firmware off when we restart here. It says the Mac Pro 2010 firmware upgrade procedure is ready to complete the firmware update. Shut down the system upon restarting, hold down the power button until the power indicator flashes or you hear a long tone. Then release the power button. A gray screen with the Apple logo and progress bar will appear. And so that's where the update is going to happen. So basically we got to restart here. So I'm basically going to shut this down and then hold the power button down. Okay, so I'm going to shut this off. And then once the system actually shuts down, then I'll hold the power down. Okay, so it's shut off now. I'm gonna hold this. The light's just solid. And I'm not hearing a tone. Oh, there we go, now it's flashing. There's the tone. I let go. Okay, so the system just shut off. It's now restarting. It's restarting again. So everything seemed to go according to plan there. The question is, does it now say Mac Pro 5.1? Okay, so now it thinks we have a completely different computer because it's asking for iCloud and stuff. So I'm assuming we're good here. So in about this Mac, it's saying that it's still early 2009. But when we go to system report here, it now says Mac Pro 5.1. 
So now we can update the processors in this to the newer ones. And yeah, that's how you flash it to a Mac Pro 5.1. Okay, so these are the two used CPUs I got. They're the Xeon X5690s, basically the top end CPU for the system. We also need a three millimeter hex wrench, which is around six inches long to fit down through the heatsink. We also need some three millimeter thermal pads and also some thermal paste. So here I was counting the amount of turns to back the screws off out of the heatsink. Then I realized that these CPUs are delitted and the ones we're putting in aren't, so it's gonna lift the heatsink up higher, so it doesn't really matter. Then slowly wiggle the heatsink off and the CPU actually comes with the heatsink because it's stuck to it and there's no retention clip to hold the CPU in. So be really careful when pulling this off. Basically, just repeat the same steps for the other CPU. Then clean the thermal paste off the bottom. As you can see here on either side of the CPU, there's some plugs. These are where the actual heat sinks connect that control the fans and manage the thermals. Uh, what we need to do is extend these because we're not gonna delid the CPU. So I pop these out and I'm gonna take the clips off them so that we can actually extend them down a little bit further so they make proper contact once the heat sink's sitting a little higher than normal. Then you're gonna wanna pop it back in the same spot and you're good to go. Next we need to put some thermal pads on the VRMs because the old ones will not reach it now since we're adding basically a slightly taller CPU. So I had to stack a couple thermal pads on top of each other because I could only get one and a half millimeters, but you need three millimeters to actually reach the distance. Anyway, swapping in the new CPU and applying thermal paste. Then slowly lower the heatsink with the connector plugging in first. If this doesn't connect properly, the fans will just run at full speed all the time. Then you're gonna tighten these up in kind of a cross pattern. Don't go too tight, just get them nice and firm and then slowly tighten them a little bit more until you get it nice and even and flush. And we gotta do the same thing to the other CPU. All right, so everything's hooked up. Moment of truth, hopefully this works. This is my first time trying it. Please work. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. I didn't put all the RAM back in it. Boom! Got this Mac. Two 3.46 gigahertz, six core Intel Xeons. And then obviously my 16 gigs of RAM. So now I just got to install the new RAM and I can have 1333 RAM and I got 64 gigs to put in it. Okay, so I rearranged some of the memory and it's telling me that all the slots are in the right spot. If we go up to about this Mac, we should see 64 gigs. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is put together my M.2 drive. Uh, this is just basically a four times card that you can insert the Samsung 951 into. I can't remember the exact model, but I'll put a link in the description. Now this is my dual SATA 3 card that you can put two SSDs into, and I'm gonna put those into RAID 0. And next, my AC Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth 4.0 card. So we're gonna pull the tray out here, and I'm gonna flip the Mac on its side. This system didn't come with a Wi-Fi card, but you can see the antennas. But we need to remove the Bluetooth module first. Now with the Wi-Fi extension kit, we're gonna connect the antenna as well as plug in the white connector into where the old Bluetooth plugged in. Now this is gonna extend it down to the other side where we're gonna install the card. So I'm gonna take the module out of the other side and I'm gonna connect all the antennas back up as well as the one we extended and then this white connector and then plug it into the socket. This will give us AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.0 for like continuity and handoff and stuff like that. Next, I'm gonna install my card. So the first one is gonna be my SATA 3 card with the two SSDs. Next, my USB 3 card, and then the M.2 drive. Now this next cable special, it's two mini six pin PCI Express to one eight pin PCI Express. 
And instead of using the HD7970, I think I'm gonna use an RX580. I got a good deal on it. And it only requires one eight pin PCI Express cable. So this will work perfectly. Just hook it up and then we're good to go. I might have to put the original video card in it in order to get anything when I load up the installer. Hard drives are both showing, video cards on. So I might have to install the original video card before I can install Sierra. Okay, so I'm gonna have to install the original video card. All right, so the video was super long, might have been boring for some of you, but for some of you that actually want to upgrade a Mac Pro and find like a cheap one somewhere and do the same thing, uh, maybe this video will help you out. I did it in kind of a way that, you know, not too many videos out there are showing how to upgrade these old Mac Pros. But basically, you're taking something that someone may have thrown in the trash, added a little bit of money into it, and actually, when you take a look at these benchmarks, you're gonna be impressed. Uh, I've been using it for transcoding video and it's been working out perfectly. Uh, it's super rock solid. I actually really love OS X for editing photos. Uh, just that spacebar tap to preview thing is really nice that Windows doesn't really have. And uh, I'm gonna show you some benchmarks with the RX 580 in it and also with the 1080 Ti because I did take it out of my system. But spoiler alert before I get to the benchmarks, this actually performs similar if not better in some areas than the 1080 Ti. That video card is $1,000 Canadian. There's a massive price difference there, and if you're not really getting that much more performance out of the expensive card, you might as well put an RX 580 in the system. Obviously, RX Vega is coming out, or is out already, and Apple's gonna be putting that in their new iMac Pro, so I have a feeling that you can probably put that in this Mac Pro and get even more performance. Anyway, let's look at the benchmarks. This is what you came here for. I'm also gonna do some stuff in Premiere that I did some tests with, just exporting uh, 4K DCI 10-bit video file. It's only one minute long, and we'll take a look at that. But first, let's get into Cinebench uh, with the RX 580. We got a CPU score of 1620, which is actually basically the same as my new Ryzen system, my Ryzen 1700X overclocked. So, that's insane, considering I didn't really spend that much money on this thing. Um, the GPU got 67 frames per second in the Cinebench score. And then when I took out the RX 580 and put in my 1080 Ti, we got a CPU score of 1611, so a little bit lower. And the GPU score was 58 frames per second. So basically 11 frames per second slower in Cinebench with the 1080 Ti than the RX 580. Now getting into Geekbench, a lot of people love seeing these synthetic benchmarks. Geekbench, we're getting a multi-core score of 25,034, which is, again, basically right on par with my Ryzen 1700X. I know there's dual CPUs in here, but that architecture is way newer. It's got faster RAM. Um, this is old. This, Like I said, this is a 2009 Mac Pro and we're getting scores that are equal to something that's new and costs more money. Uh, the single core score was 3,258. So the single core score isn't insanely fast and that's just due to the architecture. Obviously my Ryzen system's over 4,000 and a lot of the newer systems are starting to push into the 5,000. Even looking at the new iPhone, it's higher than this. So obviously the single core score isn't amazing and certain apps that use single core speed like uh, Lightroom, uh, you might notice it's not insanely fast on this, but other apps that use multi-core, you're not gonna notice a difference. So getting into disk speeds, I'm just gonna go over the RAID that I built out of the mechanical drives. We're getting 500 megabytes a second read and 428 megabytes a second write. And that's a nine terabyte RAID zero right now. So that's what I've been saving a bunch of the stuff to that I'm working on. And it actually runs pretty good because that's the speed of an SSD. And you're not gonna be able to get an SSD that's nine terabytes for that kind of price. Now looking at the M.2 drive, we're getting speeds of 1,323 megabytes a second read and 1,203 megabytes a second write. So that's pretty fast. That's not as insane as some of the new MVME drives, but um, that's all we can really get out of this system because the PCI lane is only a four times and it's only running at Gen 2 instead of the new Gen 3. But I mean, that's still really fast for an old Mac Pro like this. Okay, so I talked about 
encoding video through Canon software. Can't really give you an apples to apples comparison with the PC because it's rendering to DPX. This is rendering to ProRes, but this does render actually quite a bit faster to ProRes than my PC does to DPX. So for rendering video files, for Canon RAW light files, uh, this thing's perfect. But getting into something like Premiere, I know you're gonna be like, oh, Final Cut, Final Cut. We're not doing Final Cut because that's not what I use. I use Premiere and I'm gonna do some tests using a 4K DCI file, this 10-bit, just one minute long and I'm exporting out of Premiere with the RX 580 and we got a export time of two minutes and 13 seconds. Then I put the 1080 Ti in this thing and ran the exact same test and that exported at one minute and 51 seconds. So basically 22 seconds difference. So the 1080 Ti was 22 seconds faster. And then obviously I decided to do the exact same test on my PC with the Ryzen system and the 1080 Ti and it exported at one minute and 30 seconds. So again, there was about 20 seconds difference between the 1080 Ti in this system versus the new Ryzen system. So obviously Ryzen is more optimized. You've got faster RAM, newer architecture. It's just, it's obviously gonna be quite a bit faster. So that puts the RX 580 in the Mac Pro versus my PC with the 1080 Ti at around 43 seconds difference between them. So obviously the Ryzen system is quite a bit faster at exporting video. Anyway, that's all I wanna get into for the benchmarks. Again, I didn't buy this to do video editing with, I just bought it to transcode video, but I certainly could edit video with this thing. Um, one of the biggest things I noticed is that having 64 gigs of RAM in it lowered my Geekbench score quite a bit. So when I took out two sticks of RAM, now I'm running uh, with 48 gigs of memory. Uh, it seems to increase my speed by quite a bit in the Geekbench scores. I don't know if real world that makes a difference, but right now I'm only running 48 gigs of RAM in this thing. But I mean, that's fine for me. I'm not gonna be needing 64 gigs of RAM. So yeah, if you have a bit of time and patience and you wanna wait for stuff to ship from eBay, from China, then you basically can do the exact same thing to your Mac Pro and get this thing in the 2017. Uh, didn't really cost me that much. This system is comparable to something that I spent lots of money on, other than the video card, obviously. I wouldn't say it's the hardest thing to do as far as upgrading a computer. Obviously the CPUs take a little bit of time and some patience and some know-how. That's about the hardest thing. Everything else is pretty straightforward. But yeah, hopefully you found this video useful, especially if you're gonna do this yourself or you may be like, hmm, maybe I do wanna try something like that. There's tons of these old Mac Pros out there on eBay and all over the place. People aren't using them anymore because everyone's upgrading to like a 5K iMac. Barely anyone is buying the new trash can Mac Pros because they're just terrible value. This is way better value in my opinion. Obviously you don't get Thunderbolt. That's about the only thing you don't get on the system. Uh, obviously we added USB 3 to the system and a better video card, but we can't add a Thunderbolt card to it because that's just technology that doesn't exist on this platform. Anyway, I'll list everything in the description, what to buy if you wanna do the exact same thing. Some of it was from Amazon, some of it was from eBay, and some of it was actually just buying here home locally. Uh, obviously the system was local, but you can buy them on eBay and you can find them cheaper than maybe what I even paid. The only problem is people are starting to catch on that you can do this and the prices of them are starting to go up. Anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. I'll see you in the next one.